Hey everyone, welcome to our, swamp, our small footprint. My name is Nissa, and if you're new here, we are a family of eight who live off grid in Australia. It is Sunday today, so I'm doing my normal, well, it used to be normal weekly Sunday chat. I've been a bit slack lately, but I'm doing a bit of a Sunday chat. I've come out the back of the property where the kids ninja line and stuff is to start the chat, which is behind the chicken pen, so you're gonna hear the chickens a bit. And then I'll move through that way to show you the progress there as I go inside. So what did we want to ask, talk about today? Okay, so we got the new washing machine. There's been questions about the new washing machine. So we used to have a twin tub, which we I really enjoyed having because it was somewhat time consuming because you had to stand there for most of the time that you were doing the washing, but you could control the amount of water that you were using. You could do multiple loads without using excessive power or anything else and time-wise it worked really well. Uh, but we were on our third twin tub. I think just realistically, they're just not made for full-time washing for eight people is what it comes down to. So the motors kept on going in the spinners and they don't have belts on them. They appear to have some sort of a solenoid or something. So they don't appear to be particularly repairable and they're not that cheap. I always bought them secondhand, which, but they were hard to find secondhand. And if you had to buy them new, they were almost the same price as an automatic washing machine. So what we decided to do uh, to try and theoretically save us some time and water because it does use a fair bit of water in the twin tub we bought a front loading washing machine so i went looking to see what was on sale and there was a seven and a half kilo uh high sense on sale four and a half star energy rating uh 64 liter wash on cotton eco um which was something we had to look at too because we did have a top loader machine at one point that said it used only 92 litres as the whole wash when we were looking at the economy of the water except that it was 92 litres only on water level 2 which was next to no washing so anyway this one was 64 litres on Cotton Eco thought yep that's cool I could set a favourites which meant that Surreal could just hit the favourites or one of the kids could hit the favourites button and it's not going to heat the water so we could just use water straight from the tank uh, so it wouldn't use power that way now it washes wonderfully uh, but <laughs> the Cotton Eco has an automatic two rinses on it, not one. Sorry, I'm having to swap hands because my shoulders are sore from doing the chicken pens and holding the the uh, tripods, killing me. Um, so the the wash, the Cotton Eco is the wash, 1400 RPM spin rate. Um, it has a standard two rinses and a one wash cycle, no pre-wash, no anything like that which sounds good except that when you fill the washing machine so you're doing your seven and a half kilo load of washing or whatever it takes an hour and 45 minutes now it only draws like 300 watts i checked the i had a power meter on it to check it only draws like 300 watts but 300 watts for an hour and 45 minutes is not superb middle of the day it's not too bad except that you want to wash the washing as early as possible because you want to get out in the clothesline uh and then Every time it kicks the pump in, you're also running the 380 odd watts that the pump runs at the same time as you're running the machine and it kicks it in and out quite a few times. So I thought, okay, cool, uh, let's remove a rinse because that should drop, you know, 25, 30 minutes off the time and we only really need to do one rinse. Uh, we want the clothes clean, but staining and discoloration of that is just, it's a farm. We try and keep some clothes that are nice and neat and tidy to be wearing off the property uh, but on the property I really don't care what the kids wear or whether it's discolored and most of my clothing has uh, grease stains on it because I cook and I wipe my hands on the back of my pants so you know or on my shirt or you know I've got the belly that sits on the bench when I'm trying to do things so I end up with flat with fat splattered on my belly or grease and stuff like that so uh, the I was not overly concerned about them being pristine, just clean. We just want it clean. Uh, so I thought I'd drop a rinse, except that I can't drop a rinse. It allows me to add a rinse and it allows me to add a pre-wash, but it doesn't let me drop to a single rinse. And all the programs except for the Quick 15 have two rinses as default. Now the Quick 15 is only a one kilo wash cycle. It's only for, you know, really new stuff and things like that. Uh, I am going to try using it uh, with a full load and see if because it weighs it and then sets the time so I'm wondering if it'll wash for a bit longer if you let it weigh if there's more in it but the problem is is that I don't know how much water it uses so I'm going to have to test that as well so it's all just a little bit it's great the washing's nice and clean uh, it gets spun really well so it's nice and dry when we go to put it out on the 
clothesline. Oh, that's the other thing about the Quick, quick 15. It only does 800 RPM as its max spin rate and you can't get it any higher either. So you can't, I'd really like to be able to set my own complete program on it, but this machine doesn't seem to let me. So I'm still looking, but anyway, I'll put the model number in the, in the, um, description box so if anyone has one and knows anything then let me know but I've done some pretty intense reading and can't seem to get it to change so washing machine that's what's happening with the washing machine the other thing people were asking about was the hybrid fridge freezer so it's a 500 liter um, fridge freezer I can't remember the model number I will put it in the in the um, description I'll put a little screenshot up of it it's a chic brand uh, which we have a fridge in the Schick brand and it's quite good. It had a four, four and a half star energy rating. Uh, it uses very low wattage. I haven't put the power meter on it actually to check, but uh, by watching our power usage and stuff, it seems to be very low. It uh, can be set from eight degrees all the way down to negative 20. So you can use it as a, uh, a fridge or a freezer. So the plan is to use it as a fridge at the moment while we need a fridge. And then once we get the trailer turned into the cold room fridge we can turn it into a freezer and it'd be awesome to have that much extra space in the freezer uh it's working well the power usage is quite is quite good uh it the um it doesn't seem to be drawing anything excessive the big thing is that because it's a chest freezer you can't always tell when it hasn't closed like if a kid's put something in there that's a little too high and then close the lid it's not until you walk past and realize that the lid it hasn't suctioned down that it's not sealed so it's going to work harder and use more power so you need to be aware of that uh, especially if you have children because that's what happened is they have it has some baskets in it and someone had put a bowl in the basket and it looked like it was all right but when you close the lid obviously it was just stopping it from creating that seal around the edge and so we were we the power ran down really low like a lot lower than normal and we were trying to figure out what was using it and it turns out that that's probably what the problem was so we um but other than that I'm really happy with it uh it's I'm used to shuffling things around my chest freezer like I've got a very much of a a process of how I things do things in the chest freezer so for the fridge hasn't been much different and it's not much of a change for me it might be a bit different for people who aren't used to doing that but uh, I'm finding that it's a lot of space it's heaps of space and uh, it's working really well you just have to be aware of where you're putting things what goes on the bottom you don't want to have to access the stuff on the bottom too often because it gets heavy things like that there's a little shelf which has the compressor in it on one side so we've been using that for bottles of stuff like you can store milk and some sauces and things like that on that little shelf on the edge there um, that's higher up that's using up that space well and some stuff in the baskets in the top as well but you need to make sure that those baskets aren't being impeded by anything underneath because that'll stop the thing from sealing too but otherwise we're super happy with it and I'd highly recommend it uh, definitely a low power draw compared to a standard refrigerator um, there is a bit of condensation issues right down the very bottom of the fridge because of the fact that it's horizontal rather than vertical uh, so I have wiped it out a couple of times with a dry cloth that only because we have some fruit and veg and stuff in there like there's some carrots and stuff in a crate in the bottom and you don't want too much humidity for those or they start sprouting or going black so I've wiped it out a couple of times with a cloth but that's neither here nor there I don't have a problem with that uh, if it was always really loaded up it might be an issue but realistically our fridge is only really heavily loaded for the week after we do our week to two weeks after we do our groceries and then from that point forward it start it starts rotating in and out so it's not so bad so yes that's cool uh what else so we've been working on the chicken pens i'm going to take you through and show you we find that we got that last pen finished so we've now got everything to do with the u we haven't got the bit of uh wire at the front or the gate at the front yet but the rest of the u is finished and we actually processed eight roosters the other day so i'm really glad that we managed to get that done and dusted we have been working on figuring out how we were going to do all that for a while now um, so i'm glad we got we got eight done we've got three silver lace wind out roosters that need to be processed that we've just split up into the new pen that we just finished uh, and then we've got some of the free-ranging roosters as well that need to be culled as well so we're going to go out at night and catch them because they roost on like the back of the ute and things like that catch them and throw them into the pen overnight and then process them the next day sort of thing so we'll get that sorted as well once all the roosters are done so we've got those three civilized wine oats to do there's probably four or five uh free range roosters that need to be done and there's a couple that we won't uh process at this point but 
uh, like Earl still wanders and we'll leave him for the moment. Uh, Dave is another one that we'll probably leave, but we will probably process the rest. There's, there's a few that have names because the kids name everything. Uh, and that's neither here nor there. Uh, they still need to be processed. It's not the, it doesn't really worry me. Uh, and then we've got a Hamburg, a spare Hamburg rooster as well that needs to be processed. And then that's all our spare roosters until we do the next lot of hatching. So once all the roosters are done and that pen's empty again, then we actually have uh, planning to get some more guinea fowl off a friend who has some surplus. So we're going to catch a bunch of guinea fowl. We'll put them in that pen for six weeks to accl acclimate them to the, the property so they don't wander off. And then they can be released with the... We have eight guinea fowl at the moment of our own. So we'll get another, probably another dozen. I think she's got surplus and they'll go into that pen they'll acclimate to the property and then they'll be released and they'll free range property uh, and then once those are done then it will be the second duck pen <laughs> that's the plan so we're going to split our uh, muscovies up they have plenty of room but at the same time there's so many of them in one pen that it gets it just gets really muddy and yucky because we empty the ponds out into the pen and stuff too so we're going to split the ducks between the two pens now i did get some comments uh, a a comment or two about um, having too many chickens and 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 uh, space wise and everything else and so I went around and I did a whole big measure up and everything else to you know it cemented to me that I'm okay with what we've got in space wise and we actually have around about 130 square meters of enclosed pen there's more space in the U and everything else but there's about 130 square meters of enclosed space for the hens and uh, there is plenty it's plenty of space for the the poultry that we have and plenty of space to expand with it and all the rest of it if that's what we choose to do uh, now that we've got the processing of the roosters a little bit better now that we you know know what we're doing a little bit more then uh, we will hatch some more out and know that the australorps were the ones that we just processed recently and they're a dual purpose bred a dual purpose breed they were nice and big they were uh there was a lot of meat on them so that was good so we'll be cooking up some of that over the next couple of weeks as well uh and we they are a good breed to have that if you have to process extra roosters then that's a good breed to to do that for because they're such a nice big bird uh we want some more hamburgs because we only have two roosters and a hen so we'll process one of the roosters and then we've only got a rooster and a hen so we'll need some more of them but they're very tiny birds so they're not going to be much good for food for eating but uh the hamburgs are just such a lovely chicken that i'd like to get a few more of those and we have one aracuna uh rooster that we'll get some more eggs from somewhere else we'll we'll buy some fertile eggs to uh, breed some more of him but again the excess roosters when we do hatch them out they're a very small bird so we'll see I wouldn't mind some morans or something like that morans morans however it's pronounced uh, because I'd really like some chocolate colored eggs so at the moment we get pure white we get a peachy color brown some blues some greens um, and all that sort of thing but we don't have any of the the dark chocolate colored eggs or the olive colored eggs so it would be nice to get that as well i know they all taste the same and i know they don't make any difference but it's kind of just neat to have all the different colors so uh we might do that as well we'll see how we go with the collecting from what we've got and uh our chickens have been pretty good we managed to get uh, i think we had 21 eggs the other day so even in this weather we're still getting a fair few eggs so that's kind of nice uh, the other thing I did is I splurged on some bread pans. So I got this cast iron, you know, the cast iron Dutch ovens. I've used them before to make bread. Uh, but there's cast iron bread bakers and they have a shallow bottom and a domed top, which means it makes it easier for putting the bread in and things like that. And I really wanted something that was oval shaped so I could make batards. But uh, I didn't have anything on the head round. So I've been eyeing off these cast iron bread bakers for months and months and months but just didn't want to spend the money it just I there was no need for it so I didn't uh, and then I got this email saying a one-day sale on the Wallstead brand and they were only $65 and because I need two of course because I make two loaves of bread at any time uh, they were $65 so I grabbed two of those um, recently they only turned up last week but then I needed something to uh, proof <laughs> batards in and I kept on looking at all the different uh, bannetons I didn't want a cane one or a wood pulp one because we have issues with mold and it's just all too hard so I wanted something because I use stainless steel colanders for my rounds uh, and then I found some oval shaped 
plastic colanders at an online Japanese shop. I'll put a link in the comments. And they're only $7.50 each. So I grabbed those two. And today I tried for the first time doing the bread in the baker's oven and I'm really happy with it. I'll put some photos in here. I put it in my Instagram stories today too. So really happy with that and I'm about to go in and make tomato soup out of my roasted tomatoes so that we can have fresh bread with tomato soup for dinner too. So that would be nice. Uh, so that was the other thing that has happened. What else has happened this week? Okay, the website. So I said I would have the website sort of somewhat viewable by today and whilst it is, there's not a huge amount of content on there. So I will put a link in the comment to one of the recipe pages. Any feedback is always welcome. And um, I'll keep working on it so that there's more there uh, as you come in so that more recipes to populate it and things like that. Because at the moment there's just limited stuff in there. So uh, we will, I'll do that for you. So at the chicken pens, this is the back of the chicken pens, the back of the U. Walking down the side, we have the Hamburg pens here. They're really pretty, aren't they gorgeous? Hamburgs. Then we have the Wyandotte. So we've got we've got three hens and one rooster in here in the Wyandotte pen. And then we've got the other three roosters that are waiting for processing in this giant pen here that won't be theirs for long. It'll only be a day or two. And then we will process those. So that's the, it's really hard to show the scale on video. So I'm just trying to show the scale. So that's the edge. And then we're at the front, which is, through to here and we have the gate into the U here and the it's all done so let me turn around for a sec so this is the gate and then we have all the pens finished now so wind oat roosters wind oats there's no latch on that rooster pen yet we have to do that wind oats the hamburgs in the back corner australops in the middle Tails is on his own little pen there. That's our feed shed. Ducks in the back. Then we have our rainbow mix of just standard, all our mixed hens with uh, our own roosters, Fox Junior and Rainbow Junior are in there. All the mixed hens. And then the pen with our rescue hens and the two runner ducks because we had to split them from the Muscovies. Then we've only got two runner ducks left and with Rainbow the rooster there. So that's the uh, ducks have obviously been in that water already we just changed it there is multiple water sources in there for them so uh, all the rescue hens are in here with rainbow as well so and then back to the, the beginning of the you that's the goose water and then we've got our isolation pen in the middle so the uh akio was out in the in here with us while we were fixing finishing that pen today so i put some footage of that at the beginning of the video uh but yeah he was out here staking his claim on stuff it was very cute uh putting it rubbing his scent on everything so you know uh so yeah so that is about everything for this week uh we got the rest of the garden beds delivered uh i'm still i'm still working on getting soil delivered and the ibcs to turn into wicking beds but at the moment we got the rest of the uh, metal beds and we're going to be working on that we've got a whole bunch of lists of things that we're trying to try and get done this week to try and just progress through for spring so that i can get seed started and that i did my seed inventory uh, i don't need much there's a few bits and pieces a couple of tomato varieties that i want to do and a couple of chili varieties because i still haven't found my favorites in some of those that i'm going to order uh, but other than that i'm pretty all right for seeds so now it's just a matter of getting started so i'll bring you along as i do it all but at the same time my garden season last year was so bad that i it's embarrassing so we'll see if i how much i share until things start doing better because obviously i'm doing something wrong because if I did it right, then it would have worked, wouldn't it? So anyway, I will uh, see you all. So I'll try and get a video out pretty much every day this week to catch up on all the food prep stuff as I get everything else done as well. And uh, I'll see you then. Thanks for joining me again, guys. See you next time.